Now that we've established the idea of congruences, we can start to put some more language around some of the related concepts. Definition. If h and j are integers and h is congruent to j modulo m, then we say that j is a residue of h modulo m. The idea behind this definition is that we're going to relate numbers together by objects that we'll call residues. Notice that by the symmetric property of the equivalence, we can also say that h is a residue of j modulo m. Here are a couple examples. 3 is a residue of 18 modulo 5, since 18 is congruent to 3 mod 5. And negative 2 is a residue of 10 modulo 12, since 10 is congruent to negative 2 modulo 12. Definition. The set of integers r1, r2, up to rs is called a complete residue system modulo m if ri is not congruent to rj mod m whenever i is not equal to j, and for each integer n there corresponds an r sub i such that n is equivalent to r sub i mod m. The idea behind this definition is that we can find a collection of residues that will represent all the integers modulo m in a way where we have exactly one representative for each integer. We will see some examples of this shortly. Theorem. If s different integers r1, r2, up to rs form a complete residue system modulo m, then s equals m. This theorem shows that any complete residue system modulo m must have exactly m elements in it. We are going to start off by defining a particular complete residue system and then show that the given residue system can be related back to this one. We will pick the integers from 0 to m minus 1 as our initial residue system. We still need to prove that this works as a complete residue system. For any integer n, we can use the division algorithm to generate unique integers q and u such that n is equal to m times q plus u and 0 less than equal to u less than m. This shows that n is congruent to u mod m and that u is one of the t sub i. Also, since the absolute value of t sub i minus t sub j is less than or equal to m minus 1, it's impossible for two of the t sub i to be equivalent to each other modulo m. These two observations together show that the set 0, 1, up to m minus 1 is a complete residue system modulo m. Now consider the given complete residue system r1, r2, up to r sub s. We know that each r sub i is congruent to exactly one of the t sub i, since the t sub i form a complete residue system, which shows that s is less than or equal to m. Conversely, we know that each t sub i is congruent to exactly one of the r sub i, since the r sub i form a complete residue system, which shows that m is less than or equal to s. Putting these two statements together, we see that s equals m. Normally, we use the integers 0 through m minus 1 as the complete system of residues modulo m. We will sometimes denote the set as z sub m. We can create other complete systems of residues modulo m by exchanging any element with anything else that is a residue of it. For example, if we start with z sub 5, we can get a new residue system by replacing 4 with negative 1 and 3 with negative 2. This new complete residue system has the property that the values are as small as possible in absolute value. We can also be less restrained with our substitutions and have the set negative 26, negative 8, 13, 41, and 200 as a complete residue system. The important fact is that every element corresponds to exactly one element in z sub 5. There will be times when we're going to be focusing on just the elements that are relatively prime to m. This gives us another definition. Definition. The set of integers r1, r2, up to rs is called a reduced residue system modulo m if the GCD of r sub i and m is 1 for each i, r sub i is not equivalent to r sub j modulo m whenever i is not equal to j, and for every integer n relatively prime to m, the corresponds in r sub i such that n is equivalent to r sub i mod m. Basically, this is just a complete system of residues with all the terms that are not relatively prime to m removed. This list shows what these sets look like when using the set z sub m as a complete system of residues. The reduced residue system derived from z sub m is usually denoted z sub m star. Notice that when the modulus is prime, that z sub m star is just z sub m with zero removed. This is one of many patterns that exist in the z sub m star. We'll spend some time looking into those a little bit later. We will close this video with one more definition and a statement of a theorem. Definition. The function phi of m will denote the number of positive integers less than or equal to m that are relatively prime to m. The function phi of m is called the Euler phi function. From our chart, we can compute the values of phi of m by just computing the number of elements in each of the z sub m star. Theorem. 
If S integers R1, R2 up to Rs form a reduced residue system modulo M, then S equals phi of M. The proof of this theorem is not very different from the previous proof. We will go through all the details of this one in class. Thank you for watching this video. I'm currently dabbling with the idea of creating more videos like these for my classes, and I welcome constructive comments that might help me make better videos in the future.